स्ट्रेटेजिक अफेयर सब्सक्राइब टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल क्लिक द बेल आईकॉन फॉर अपडेट Hello and welcome to Stack News Global and welcome to the Gist, a signature show on foreign affairs and security. I'm Surya Gangadharan. The world's most revered or notorious uh, intelligence agency, the CIA, is renewing its focus on China, and uh, this has many implications. And to understand their import. Uh, we are turning to Mr. Vikram Sood, uh, former chief of India's external intelligence agency, the RAW Research and Analysis Wing. Uh, Mr. Sood, welcome, sir. Glad to have you. Thank you for having me on your show. Sorry. Uh, first of all, let's uh, take a quick look at the CIA's reason for this renewed focus on China. And for that, the best place to turn to is their website, the CIA website. We have a small graphic here for you. Um, the uh, headline itself says something about how the cia sees china adapting to future challenges there uh, is there uh... and we also have a small graphic here <clears throat> the graphic the graphic basically sets out the main um, uh issues they're going to deal with a uh, china mission center which has been set up in the cia uh, chief technology officer is being appointed uh, also a transnational and technology center being set up uh, that will focus on uh, new and emerging technologies uh, economic security climate change and global health so there you have it in a nutshell what the cia is renewed focus on china is all about so let me turn now to Mr. Vikram Sood, our guest for this evening. So the China Mission Center, uh, what could it do or add to what is already being done in the CIA vis-a-vis China? How do you see it? I think, you know, after, during the Cold War, we all know they were concentrating on Russia. Everything was thrown into the Russian operation, shall we say. Then. After a hiatus of about 10 years, then it became terrorism. Now that sort of, in a manner of speaking, terrorism is over because they've gone home from Kabul, they're re-stressing on China. And, uh, you know, this term of this China Mission Center, etc., is a nice sounding phrase, but all intelligence agencies, all security agencies have a focus. Who's your priority one or priority two? The foreign office also does that. And then you act accordingly. The, the, the thing that is different is that they are now going open about it. They're saying, we are going to do this. And this is our stress on technology, on climate, health, etc., etc. It's not just pure, pure politics or pure military anymore. They haven't even. I don't think they have listed terrorism as one of the items. Yes, it's there. It's there uh, in in the in the body of the text that I read. That when it's talked about the, the aggressive Russians and the ambitious Chinese or devious, uh, you know, devious North Koreans, etc., etc that uh, they were to tackle them, they didn't mention terrorism as a separate subject. But it's there, it's, it's listed somewhere there, it's, it's low priority. So now we've got China as the focus for intelligence. And I think the whole stress is more on technology this time. There are many reasons we can go into that later if you like, why they would go in for technology. A, because humans in China is very difficult to get. It's not, it's not a society that you can pick up information easily. So, uh, maybe they feel that they can pick it up from, from the outer, outer you, you know, from the ether. Yeah. You mentioned human so this in China is up. very difficult. Uh, you mean to say that um, even for an agency like the CIA, it's difficult to cultivate 
human intelligence sources in China to get uh, entry there to be able to infiltrate? It, it is. It is. It is not that it's not being done. It was. It is done, but it's much more difficult to to cultivate and raise sources in China while in China. You may be able to raise him if a man comes out and you can meet him in a third country or in the United States and be able to cultivate him. But in China, and then the communication of him, so it's not enough to have a man there. You've got to be able to yeah. communicate with him, to be able to get maybe documents. That's very important. It's not just the point of view that you're looking for. And when you're looking for technology and when uh, you know, this person, this from Pentagon, who was the software chief, has just resigned uh, a day or two ago. He has said that we are way behind China in AI. We're going to lose out yeah. unless we do something. So that that is the fear that they they've got to catch up with the Chinese. The Chinese find it easier to work in, uh, in the United States, far more easy to cultivate, to work, to propagate whatever they want to do. It's an open society. Yeah. So what about, um, given the fact that in all those Cold War years, the CIA was able to, to a greater extent, able to penetrate uh, the former Soviet Union, you know, given all that expertise, uh, do you mean to say the Chinese are better than the Russians in terms of being able to guard their people? You know, uh, you know so we don't know whether all these espionage stories don't come out when they're alive. Uh. They come out after a few years. You get to know that oh, there was this source or he's apprehended or trapped. Uh, we haven't heard that happening in, in from, from China yet, but there could be there could be deep, deep moles there. We don't know. Unless they're exposed and the story comes out, the media talks about it. The intelligence agencies are not going to tell you or me or anybody else that they're working there. Oh yes, we have we have we have a source in the Politburo. Who's going to tell you that? Yeah. So we don't know. They do have they do have. I think their 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 uh, forte lay, lay in not so much as operational intelligence as in the on the assessment of events by reading Chinese journals, magazines, and interpreting the interpretative uh, analysis that they were able to do and get an idea of what the Chinese may be up to. But of course, when you have major incidents like, like the Cultural Revolution or, or Tiananmen, then everybody knows about it. You can't hide it. Mm -hmm. So what's going so on that, inside the, the yeah. system? So, um, yeah, sorry. So when it comes to terrorism, you mentioned that terrorism is now down the CIA's radar. Um, uh, I mean, what does that, in, I mean, the implications of that, is it something that we would uh, not see want to happen or something we have no choice now, given how the U.S. priorities you know, have changed? Do you actually, if, if you step back and look, when, when in 2001, I think September or October, when they announced their global war on terror and that they would go after all terrorists which have global reach, yes. that's the expression, global reach. Lashkar Taiba didn't have global reach, so we were not going to be getting any assistance. Okay. Jaisha Mohammed didn't have global reach. So, we were we were not in that game. We, they 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 quietly put that aside hmm. because that it's was convenient. not a threat to the United States. Terrorism is only terrorism if it is, if it is a threat to the United States, not to India. I mean, where they will lose sleep on it. So uh, that's that's the difference. They think that their assessment is now that the bike is broken. Now this ISP. KF or whatever you can call them, Al Qaeda, yeah, yeah. Or all these of Tereke Taliban, Pakistan, even Taliban, they're all local regional affairs. Now you deal with it. I'm going home. Hmm. So that's that's yeah. that's the uh, interpretation I make out of it. That we're being left to our devices. 
So we say that um, uh, Pakistan's value in that sense has decreased or has it gone up now? Because they still need access to China, isn't it? Tricky question. Good question. Because uh, the point is, when you want to operate in China, you got to operate through other agencies, other locations, other countries. Maybe us too, not just Pakistan. But do you think that America thinks that the Pakistanis will operate the same way as they operated with the Taliban? Or will they operate differently? And do you think the Chinese will allow that to happen? So how the deal works out, it, let's imagine that they, 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 they say, let's ask the Pakistanis to help Pakistan will have a price. Mm -hmm. Pakistan will have a price, price yeah. Yeah, what could that price be? Political, economic, financial, military, some price. Mm -hmm. And you can bet on one item. It could even be India. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could be India. They could ask us also to help. Um, in um, in the current uh, day, when there's so much technology going around, uh, has the value of human come down? It's a it's a it's a different kind of game now. You know, ultimately, whatever intelligence you can pick up from from your technology. Somebody's got to sit down and actually make sense out of it. Artificial yeah. intelligence will take you thus far. It won't take you home. But there has to be somebody who has knowledge in their knowledge who can run the last mile. Be able to, let's say, see behind the wall. That only human source, you know, human intelligence agent or expert or analysis, analyst can provide. And otherwise, it'll become uh, like a artificial intelligence, Google search. Yeah. You, yeah. These are your preferences, A, B, C, D, E, which one do you want? Percentages, yeah. that's not how it works in intelligence. So, uh, human intelligence will always be required, human operation will always be required. How do you know which intel which technology you want to get? Who has it? Possibly a human being will lead you to that. I should think. Or in knowledge that something is being developed. A new technology is being developed by Chinese that could do A, B, C and arm your systems. So you want to work counter to that or you want to get that first. That's the game. Mm -hmm. So um, given India's own uh, long experience of uh, dealing with the Chinese, you mentioned that India could also be uh, 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 play a role in this uh, renewed CIA focus. I, I should imagine so that they would say, well, "Let's let's get together and cooperate on China. We cooperated on terrorism. We cooperated on so many other things. So let's let's do this for the good of mankind, hmm. whatever terminology you want to use." Because the assessment in the USA is by 2035, um, China will be this will have supremacy in Asia through economic and military coercion, they'll have achieved that. And that's not very far away. And if they want to build this kind of a system that I imagine they're wanting to build, it won't happen overnight. I really don't know how much they have already and how much is the, what is the gap. I would imagine recruitment, training, positioning, all that will have to be worked out. The equipment is the least of the bother. You, that can be available easily. Whether you want to outsource it, outsource it. 
we don't know. So far, I think this is a, a message to the world. Get ready. So <clears throat> we have a question here <clears throat> from one of our viewers. Uh, let me just turn to his uh, her name is 124 Just Madness. He says, I know Raw is secretive, but does India have a dedicated school for Strictly speaking, this is not about India, it's about the CIA. But, um, well, that's the question from one of our viewers. Would you get to answer? No. What does it mean by, does India have dedicated schools? Indians or RAW or CIA? Who? Your pardon, sir? I mean, this is this is a this is a private enterprise. One should be having universities and colleges where they teach Chinese studies and think tanks. Yeah. <coughs> there are there are institutions here that have uh, Chinese studies. I imagine they're teaching Chinese also at some level. Next. Uh, so you have to repeat that again. We uh, we have lost you in the. Sorry. Lost me. Can you hear me now? No. Uh, sir, we, yeah, we stabilized again. Um, just moving on, sir. The um, issue of um, uh, Western dominance in key areas like technology, is there a genuine fear now that the Chinese are well ahead? Whether in AI, I know there was a, you made a reference to AI and the US expressing concern. But in areas of Western uh, dominance, traditionally in technology, uh, there is a real concern now that the U.S. is well behind. I, I I don't think they are well behind, but I think they are. The Chinese have caught up in many spheres already, like in artificial intelligence. But China, the U.S. is still the prime technology power of the world. innovations that come out. Chinese are very good at replicating, yeah. reverse engineering. But original, original research and development, the Americans, you can't beat them. Not yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're, they're, they're really catching up fast. Mm -hmm. So reading between the lines, do you see a uh, concerted effort by the U.S. now to, um, you know, uh, undermine China in uh, uh, various ways? I mean, um, you see them opening up new fronts. I mean, short of war, but uh, one can't rule yeah, it out either, can we? If, if you look at the uh, this uh, submarine deal, 
U K U S A K U S A U K U S and a little more interest in quad. One gets the feeling that the Americans are getting a little more active now because uh, their mind has been taken off other issues. And I think there is now also a feeling in U.S. that Xi Jinping, with his ambitions, is also portraying that Biden is a, is weak. Uh huh. And now is the time. And the propaganda that comes out from United from China is that the United States is on terminal decline. Sorry, say again. Terminal decline. I see. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, my ambitions to rule from uh, the Pacific to the Atlantic, literally, the mm -hmm. other way across the continent of Europe and Eurasia, and um, the United States is on the decline, and now is my chance uh, to to make it. And after, and he would like to achieve as much as much as he can in his lifetime. Are the, are the Chinese projecting this view because they sense um, certain issues domestically? I think that they, 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 the projection is more to us outside mm -hmm. and it's different in, in a different way inside the country. People even talk that there are some differences within the ruling establishment in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, China. So Xi Jinping may probably have to assert himself there and therefore portray a larger than life image at home also. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this aspect of corruption being used to, to weed out unwanted, undesirable, ambitious people yeah. is, is an old trick. So. Uh, and he could be trying that simultaneously. I have another question from a viewer, Rao Saab. Uh, first of all, thank you, Rao Saab, for your donation. He wants to know, I'm sorry, he seems to have disappeared. Um, he wants to know, how can we convince the government of India to get serious about cyber war on China and Pakistan? What will it take to shake them up and allocate resources there? <laughs> The more you talk about it, the more they will listen. <laughs> I mean, if we, if we don't talk about it, if we don't write about it, if we don't uh, debate on these issues, we only debate peripheral issues and, and uh, talk about, uh, you know, how it is on our TV these days and nothing serious gets discussed. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen, I haven't seen a serious discussion on these kinds of things anywhere, <laughs> which should be heard by the common man as much as by the government. What happens is that we do these debates in closed uh, rooms, talk to each other and make out a very fine document and statement and send it across and that's the end of it. Yeah. Unless you keep an issue alive and public and show, you know, your concern about it. It won't, it, you know, every government tends to, like, I'm not, I don't know how much they're doing these days, really. But my feeling is that they are, they are a little more serious than the previous government was on these issues. Mm -hmm. So, last question. Um, this again about India. Uh, we've been done, looked at how the CIA is dealing with China. How are we, in your sense, uh, where are we in terms of being able to uh, anticipate um, you know, how the Chinese move, their actions against us. I mean, given your background. You want me to tell you what I, what happened in my time? We want to tell you what happens now. <laughs> if you want to, most welcome. No, I can't tell you what happened in my time and I don't know what's <laughs> happening now. But, you know, these days with, uh, as far as military moves are concerned, they can't be hidden for long. We may not have that kind of 24-hour 
all all corners covered coverage like the United States can have or even the Chinese possibly can have, at least in its neighboring countries. But we do have a fair amount of coverage and we do get to know black movements and and that's why Galwan and all happened the way they did. We did get to know what was going on, maybe it's a little late, but we did. So, uh, there is there is the capability, it's all a question of time and how much you can spend on this kind and how much the auditor will allow you to spend it. You've been in the government, you've been in the army? Never sir, never. No, okay. Journalism so right too. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it, it <laughs> the, the getting to convince the accounts chap is a great achievement in India. So uh, we have we have to learn that we are. If you want to be a big power or a regional power, then you have to behave like that. If you want to behave like that, then you got to be able to say, "I will pay a price for it." Yeah. Nothing comes free. So um, it'll take us. I think. I think we are. We are. We are getting better and better at it. The old hang-up is gone. We are now able to get things done faster. The fact that you are now developing, uh, making armament in the private sector. Even Air India is now private. So there is a move to to, shall I say, get on with it, get things moving. And once once you have a, you know, uh, the patriotism is not the, uh, yeah. what, what is the word, not the birthright only of the civil servant or the politician. Absolutely. It's, it's Absolutely. everybody's birthright and, and yeah. we should be able to trust the corporate sector to deliver a much finer product. Yeah. Then we can in, in some of our government institutions. That's a fact. So wherever the quality comes, we should go for it. I'm sure Mahindra and Mahindra, Tata, and all these. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not campaigning for them. But I'm saying that they are the guys who can do it. On that note, sir, um, thank you for your time and um, thank you for that insight. Uh, great talking to you and uh, we I certainly intend to keep up this discussion as we go forward and of course the CIA goes forward. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Take care. Thank you. All, the best. all of you out there who have uh, come in with your comments, observations, your donations also, thank you again very much. Uh, deeply appreciated. Uh, continue following us on Instagram, on social media, on our YouTube. Subscribe to us. Thank you. Good night.